Hello, dear viewers, Dr. Lightman, Shai. Hello. On our previous show, we said that the ten sfirot are the quality of the Creator and that they exist in each of us, in our heart, in a hidden way, like a potential. And when we learn about them, when we yearn to come to know them, they start developing in us. And this is actually how we build a connection with the upper force, the quality of bestowal called adhesion. This is, in short, what we talked about on our previous show. So, we'd like to start with a quote about the Ten Sfirot. Bala Sulam writes, First, we must know the names of the Ten Sfirot, which are Keder Chuchma Bina, Chesed Gvura Tiferet, Netzach Hod Yesod Malchut. So, first of all, let's start with who was the first to reveal these spheres, Sfirot, Dr. Leitman? Adam? Adam? Uh, host, what Adam? Dr. Leitman. Adam? A fellow. There was a fellow called Adam. You, call, you can call him Adam. Host, the famous Adam from the story, Dr. Leitman. Yeah. And he discovered that there is an upper force, and uh, the upper force is working on him, influencing him, and that's what he discovered. His actions, qualities. And he even tried to explain it and reveal it to other people. Host. So he was the first that the Sfirot, spheres, uh, this language became revealed to him and he wrote about it. Dr. Leitman, yes. Host. Well, he didn't call it Sfira number one, Sfira number two, Dr. Leitman, according to what he felt. Host, suppose I feel the Sfira, what do you mean, Dr. Leitman? If you don't feel it for you, it's just a name. But for him, it was something. It was different. Post. So he reveals some kind of quality, some kind of aspect of the Creator, Dr. Leitman, right? Host. And he feels that it, it needs to be called Tiferet, Dr. Leitman. Yeah, host. He could have called it something else if he felt like it, Dr. Leitman. Not that he felt like it, that's what he felt. He has a f- copied this quality into himself. And in his qualities, he saw that this is how this phenomenon needs to be named. Post the name, Tiferet, is it an objective name? Someone else who attains what he attained would call it Tiferet too? Dr. Leitman, yeah? Yeah. He revealed the Sfirot, plural for sphere, Sfira, the worlds, the Parzufim, plural for Parzuf. Everything that we use today host, seems really strange. It's like, I suppose even a scientist today, he calls a certain phenomenon, he calls it force, he calls it mass. Here, this name exists regardless of the person who discovers it. Dr. Leighton, no, it's related to the person who discovers it because the person discovers it and feels it. And then he expresses his attitude toward the phenomenon in that. So when a person today reveals that same sphera of Tiferet and reveals it inside himself, from what I understand, he'll say, yeah, it needs to be called Tiferet. Dr. Leitman, yes, host. And it has to be called in Hebrew Tiferet. Dr. Leitman, yeah, but it's not necessarily that it's Hebrew. In any other language, too. His inner feeling will be the way you express it in Hebrew in the name Tiferet. 
First, so if an American fellow doesn't speak Hebrew now discovers this quality, he will call it in the way he describes this feeling in his language. Dr. Leighton, yeah. Host, Baal Salam starts with saying, first we must know the names of the ten Sfirot. A person who starts studying, it's important for him to know these names, even though they don't say anything. Dr. Leighton, well, you have to call a phenomena by a certain name. So suppose I started taking interest in the wisdom of Kabbalah. What can I get from these names, from knowing these names, reading these names? What do I get? Dr. Leitman, that you just call the Sfirot by the name Sfirot. Nothing. You don't know what that is. You're just expressing some kind of word. Host. Exactly. So why does Bala Sulam say, first we must know the names of the ten Sfirot, Dr. Leitman? Because a person starts taking interest in it, you need to teach him the ABCs, the Aleph Bet. And then you can deepen into whatever. Host. Suppose we go over Keter, Chuchma, Bina. Is there a point in trying to reach some kind of initial acquaintance with every sphera? What does it symbolize? Dr. Leitman, preliminary acquaintance with every sphera for us symbolizes its character in relation to man's desire to receive and in relation to the phenomenon or phenomena that he reveals in that sphere. And this is how he starts getting to know the spiritual world. Host, is it possible to go over each and every sphere and you will say a few words about them? Dr. Leitman, yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure we'll find the words for it. Host, let's start Ketel. There is such a quality of the Creator called Ketel. Dr. Leitman, Ketel is the uppermost sphere that is the crown. It is above everything. And it fulfills all the rest of the spheres, spherot, under it, beneath it. Host. And now, a person that's developing in relation to that in me, there's also some kind of kettle someplace? Dr. Leif, no. Host, not yet. Okay, so is it something that exists in the system, in the in the laws of the spiritual system, and I need to aspire for that keto? Dr. Leitman, suppose. Host, it's like the source, the starting point. Okay, I understand. What is chokhmah then, Dr. Leitman? Chokhmah is that which the keto passes on from itself. Host, the action of the keto, what's, what comes out of it. Dr. Leitman, yeah. Host Bina. Dr. Leitman, Bina is how that which comes out of the Keter through the Chokhmah influences the matter of creation and awakens some kind of response in matter. And therefore it's called Bina in Hebrew from the word Idbunanut, observation. Observing what goes on, what the Keter sends to me as Chokhmah, what goes inside of what goes on inside of me, that is already Yetzira, Bina, creation. Host, as someone who's been studying for several years now, I, I understand that everything revives around the quality of Bina. It's something very serious. We talk about it all the time. Why is it so, Dr. Leitman? Because that's the response of the desire to receive, the response of matter to influence from above hosts. So it's like the participation of creation in regard to the Creator. That's strong. What about Chesed? Dr. Leitman, we already start studying the particular qualities that become revealed in the desire to receive, in matter, because after the Bina, there are already results of the influence of Keto and Bina. In matter, there is already 
appears the influence, phenomena of the influence of the Keter over the desire to receive, which is Netzach, Od, Yisod. There are six Sfirot that act on influence the matter of creation, the desire to receive, and their sum total is expressed all in all in the Malchut, the final tenth sphera. Host, and what is it, and why is it called Malchut? Dr. Leitman, because there is the rule of matter within creation. Host, so it is if governs all matter molech from the word malchut in Hebrew to govern. So it's like these superior sfirot that govern everything and they mold everything beneath them. The seven sfirot beneath them. Is it possible to get into the chesed gvorat iferet more specifically like you talked about chesed about ketuch mabina? Dr. Leitman, no, it will confuse people. Host, okay, I want to read another quote excerpt from the book of Yetzirah, the book of creation that's attributed to Abraham, our patriarch. He says, there are ten sfirot and not nine or eleven. Study and understand this thoroughly. Well, first of all, I understand that the first time I heard it, there was something very exciting about it. First of all, that 4,000 years ago, he writes and he's engaged in the same things that we're engaged in today, that it's like disconnected from time, what I come to study from you, he did the exact same thing. Dr. Leighton, what do you think would change? Host, I don't know, I imagine people sitting in the desert, dressed up in skins, Dr. Light. No, 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 it's not like that. People that live their life, eat, drink, sleep, bear children, continue life, and along with it, there are such that get a desire, special, unique desire, to reach the root of creation. Where am I from? What am I for? And such people start inquiring. He's not inquiring with the help of computers like you do today. But inside of himself. Host, what special is, even if you take Archimedes, compared to a contemporary scientist. There's a big difference between how he spoke and expressed himself and how scientists today express themselves. But here nothing changed. Dr. Leitman, only that it was written 5,000 years ago, host. So all the more, it's very special. Dr. Leitman, look, when you're engaged in Kabbalah, you gradually get used to, you become accustomed to a different timetable. These people, they're close to you. They act out of their own emotion, out of their own sensations. They don't need some instruments in order to inquire matter, telescopes, microscopes, and therefore you see them, you feel them. They too related in different human ways forms to natural phenomena and wanted to deepen into it and inquire. Host. It's even kind of funny how it starts. Know that there are ten spirit, not nine, not eleven. What is he trying to pinpoint us on, Dr. Leibman? That there are such that want to say that there are more than ten. There are six, there are three. Ten we can divide. 
give them some kind of a different characteristic because the first three sfirot are the main ones. They're called Gal, the first three. Then there are the seven, seven last ones, which are the Zat, the seven lower ones, Zayn, Tachtonot in Hebrew. There is different other phenomena there, like the upper part, the lower part of every of every sphira. Each such sphira has the ability to connect in some way the upper part of one sphira with the lower part of another. It's like in chemistry somewhat when we research matter, we see different phenomena like there, that there. Host, and all that is in my heart, Dr. Leibman. It's all in our desires. There is something that we see if we look at the Holy Scriptures written by Abraham, then the Zohar, here, there. It appears in stories. It's all written in the form of stories, Dr. Leighton, for it to be easier for us to grasp. They looked for a kind of, for language, for a code of how to pass it on from one generation to the next. And then comes the Ari, suddenly, Dr. Leitman. Well, that's after a lot of time. If we're talking about Adam Rishon, the first Adam who revealed all the Sfirot and everything, then the Ari, he came in the... Uh, what, in the 16th century, okay. no. 5,000 years later. Host. But what's special about the Ari is that if it used to appear in stories, the Ari talks only in the language of Sfirot. He compares between them, he, research, he researches them, you know, there's no longer a mountain or bird or nation that goes from place to place, but it's all sfirot spread out on many pages. Dr. Leitman, that's why we respect Dari so much, because he left the language of the story, the language of the branches, and started talking in, let's call it, in a scientific way. Post, what allowed him to do something like that, Dr. Leitman? Attainment. It is a person who revealed reality in an amazing way that we simply don't know, and we really don't know. It's written about this in many places that we don't know where all of a sudden does this young fellow who was 30-something who attained things so wondrously in such a simple way that he wrote about it and taught it. And all in all, and within two years, he revealed what we have today as the basis of the Ari to the wisdom of Kabbalah, the foundation. Host, it's amazing. Every time you're asked about the Ari, you're, you're, you try to find the right words, like there's no way to describe the magnitude of the Ari, Dr. Leighton. It's really so. When I talk about him, I really feel it. Host, that's amazing. Host, because he revealed the wisdom of Kabbalah to us. He revealed to us everything that we know today. There's no man who's attained more than him. We don't know the attainment, if we can say we don't know the degree of attainment that Abraham was in, and the forefathers, and Rajbi, Rabbi Shimon, Bar Yochai. But the Ari, he is nonetheless the foundation of contemporary Kabbalah. Uh, we have a quote by the Ari from the Tree of Life. 
Behold, that before the emanations were emanated and the creatures were created, the upper simple light had filled the whole existence and there was no vacancy such as an empty air, a hollow, but all was filled with that simple boundless light. And there was no such part as head or end, but everything was one simple light, balanced evenly and equally, and it was called the light of Ensof, infinity. It's even hard to ask about it. What, what, when you read these words for the first time, what did it do to you? Dr. Leitman, I remember that it really shook me up. A simple form in which he writes about it, because all the books that I read before the writings of the Ari, they were so confused that later I started searching and revealing the writings of the Ari that it was really like. Uh, sun in the sky. What is he writing here about the moment of creation of reality, about how everything started, even about what was there before? Dr. Leibniz, of course, creation reveals to us everything that was and will be. Host, how can I write about something that happened before something was created? Dr. Leibniz, yeah? There's no such thing as if it happened, it happened. Host, and he attains these things and therefore can write about them. Dr. Leitman, of course, of course. Host, that blows your mind, really. Dr. Leitman, yep. Host, uh, previously you said that there's no time in spirituality that spirituality is not a matter it's not a matter of, uh, of some historic story about someone who lived a thousand years ago or whatever when you reveal it Dr. Leitman, you're in that same point. Host, right, you're together with the Ari, you're together with Abraham, our patriarch, etc. And we want to end this show with Bala Sulam, who writes about his deep connection with the Ari. Dr. Leitman, yeah, it is an incarnation of the soul of the Ari. Host, and he writes the, the study of the Ten Sfirot. What does Bala Sulam bring us in the study of the Ten Sfirot that we can take from it? Dr. Leibman, look, we can take the Tree of Life by the Ari. That, uh, it is he himself who wrote. But Bala Sulam, he took this book and extended elaborated it, arranged it with chapters, with different things, such that we can open the book and start studying it, and somehow absorbing. And therefore, for us, the study of the Ten Sfirot is closer to us than the Book of the Tree of Life. But still, these are books that are all based on the attainment of the Ari. Host, as much as we talked about the Ari, still, when I only open tests, I even once asked you about it, it seems irrational, even today with computers, and if you put together a team, I don't understand how do you create something so well organized, elaborate, with chapters, with references, with commentary, and he did it by himself with some small printing press in Jerusalem. It seems irrational that it happened. Someone who didn't see the book doesn't understand. Dr. Leitman, look, we're talking about people, Ari and Bala Sulam, in which there is the divine force that feel nature, matter, and therefore it, this is their attainment. Host, once you said that uh, if there was an empty part in the page that there is place to add to the printing press, 
On the spot, he added more words, more letters. Dr. Leibman, of course, posts. For me, this, you know, science, whatever, studying, it's a process that you need to understand, to work on. For him, it's like instinct. Dr. Leibman, yeah, he simply reveals that which already exists in him. He sits and writes. He doesn't need to think while he writes. Post. What do you mean doesn't need to think, Dr. Leitman? In, in, in our archive, we have his manuscripts. So there, you don't, he, he doesn't erase anything or add something. No, no, no such thing. He writes and that's it. Post. What does it mean he doesn't need to think, Dr. Leitman? Because it, it's inside of him. So he pours it out on paper. Host, we will come to that too. Dr. Leitman, you're asking me? So, when we will discover, Dr. Leighton, that's called attainment. Great, high, special, unique attainment. Anyone can. It's not that it's open only to a few, and that's it. Anyone can reach such things and reveal to himself all the world's and to write about it and to know and understand, no problem. Host, I think this is what's special that here we write, we read quotes that are as if intellectual and smart, etc. But from the talk, it's like Abraham said, inquire, study this. Suddenly you start feeling this inner sensation that this upper force is creating changes in you just by sitting and talking about it. So let's hope that many more will follow, Dr. Leighton. It's happening. It's happening. And we only have hope that even we uh, will discover thousands and thousands of people that come, study, and reach attainment. Because all in all, the result of the proper study is attainment. Host, I'm left with plenty of questions, and that's good. So that we'll have something for next week. This was amazing. Thank you very much, Dr. Leitman. Thank you, too, and see you soon. All the best.